<laughs> Alright, continuing our look into Vue.js, we have a simple events manager here. Uh, what it does, it basically just allows us to create an event, to edit an event, to open it up in a modal, and then we could press delete and delete it. And we could also do a simple search. So I'm just going to run it through. So what we're using here is Bootstrap, um, CDN, and Vue.js via CDN, and then we just have a notifications plugin again. So these are just simple one file plugins that we're using, not any other fancy stuff that is common with open um, front-end apps. So we just have a simple Vue.js, and we call it in right here, and then we build out our HTML. So we pull the events from the database, so we call, so this is our table right here. We have event description, venue, date, time, contact, actions, and then we have V for event and events, and then we just display every event. We also have some on-click on -click events here with the pre-event to allow it from going to the default action, and we call edit event, and we also have edit event on three specific places. So I can just show you that, so we can edit event here, Edit the event here, and then when we actually press the edit button, we could also edit the event. So, what V on click prevent does is stops it from going to the default option, right? So, if you were using jQuery, it would be like returning false. No, we're not using any special um, bootstrap plugins here. So, the main thing we use, I use personally in bootstrap, is the model. So, I'm just going to show you how we set that up, right? So, we have a function here called show model, and then we have one called high model. So, this is basically what you use to display the model. And one is just setting it as block and inline, and the other one is dis disabling it, right? So, let me just show you how that looks on the model itself. So, we have the model here, and basically, we're just allowing some attributes to show. So, we have the bind style, and we have display. So this allows you to show it or make it disappear and we also have where do we else we do where else do we have it so this is the backdrop so you just pay attention to this this is the backdrop that makes it give it this uh, when you can see this little uh what you call it this fade out kind of black background so that's the backdrop there so we also have a display on this a v-bind style and a display and on the close button, we have a hide modal, right? So on the close button, this close button, we have a hide modal function that allows us to close close the modal. The only other thing to notice, it's not 100% perfect. We have this overflow style CSS there because we can get it as smooth as it was before. Maybe we could research it more. But for now, we just say modal overflow y dash y auto. And that allows us to scroll up and down in our modal quite simply. So that's the model. All right. So once you reload the page, you will be getting the event. So let's look at how we can get the event. So once the object is created, we have uh, this dot get event. So let's go to this function get event, and what it basically does is call the fetch uh, function JavaScript function this base URL action equal to get events and page. That's the page initial, or even though we're not using it currently. And then we get the JSON, and then we set the response to to this dot events. All right. So that's what get events does. It sets the start events, and then remember what I was showing you above is where we just look through the table. So we look through the table event and events. So I did a video on this, so I could just link it. But uh, all we have here is a DB model, and we call get all records, and then we return JSON response. So that's how simple our server side logic event API is. All right, very simple. So when we click on any one of these uh, rules, we can edit the event. So basically what we do in there is we say, we call it this dot show model, and then we say in this active event is equal to object. So in e edit event, we pass in the current object of the event. And so once we press this button, we can edit the event. And as you can see, the changes happen live, right? My new live event. And once we save it, it will be saved. We also have another notification. Let's just reload the page to confirm that my new live event. All right. So once you call edit event function, we have to pass in the object. All right. So once you pass in the object, we will to edit an event. To create an event, we press the create new event button. So let's just see what it actually does. Create new event, and let's go to that button section. We have create new event, create new event. Where is it? Create new event. All right. So if you can go to this, all this does is create a empty active event object and then we change the modal message so the modal message allows us to change 
the mode on my suggest the name suggestor actually i've created new event here oh add new event here the actual main mode on, and then edit this event all right so you see this is the mode on message that's changing we should actually change the tab when we are doing that as well all right so let's pay attention to that add it new event that is not changing all right to save an event all we're taking is the form data and we're passing it in as the body and we call in the base url action equal to save event i just want to confirm with you what you're seeing as the base url so we have the base url somewhere here all right so that is so we could just use that url all the time that makes it easier anyway back to saving an event all you have to do is call fetch pass in the form data either target and then we get back to response whatever the response may be and then we also have our notification object right there so this is the save changes button but up here we also have it should be somewhere here v on submit right so v on submit we call the save event function so that's what we use and v on submit and then we have the object here the event and then we can get the target from the event and then we can pass it into form data so that everything we have in our form will be passed in so we can access it from the server side all right so remember i'll be using v on submit to submit our form and then we're just going to the server side of things and we should look for save events again that's just a simple function save event and it's a simple function because we're using the db model object and all we're doing is whatever information we get this is the insert record one we insert in the record and we return in the id all right so once we get the data post title post description venue event date time contact name and number once we get that we just return the id of course you can delete events so once you press edit you can see we can delete our event here it'll just access to confirm it so once we confirm it are you sure you want to delete this event you press ok the event has been successfully deleted so let's just let me just show you how we do that so the actual delete event function is pretty simple we just pass in the id we have the confirmation here confirm are you sure you want to delete if it returns true then we call the fetch function we have the base url we say action equal to delete event and the id the id that we passed in and then we just reload the page this is this dot get events this is after we get our json and data we say this dot get event and we say event has been deleted all right so let's just look at it from the uh, html side so the id that we pass in is, is the active id and remember the active id is called anytime we press edit all right so if i didn't show you that let me just show you that the active id is called every time we press edit so if you were to go to edit uh edit the edit function so we're just looking for that right now edit this active id right so we call we create this object every time we call the edit function and then we just get any id from it and we pass in it into delete event and that should allow us to delete so finally we have search we can just search for port of spain port of spain search and that should give us that and then we can clear this query all right so let me just show you how we do our search so let's just look at the html we clear any query we have a few added events and then we have our search box and our search button so the search box and button is here and the button actually says search events so what we call search events we also have the model query search query so we get in this query let's just go to search events all right so search events we get in the query this dot query remember this is a variable that we assign up here search query and we assign the model which would be the attribute on the on the input all right so search query and now we're going to search events basically we just call it a fetch search events and then we return in the data this is a true search it's not a, a, a javascript search or it doesn't search the record it's actually search the database so we have a search function data search records and then we just pass in the values that we want to search and then we return the response all right so this is pretty simple again i might not have shown this but i will show how it actually works from the the b model side all right so once we search it we can get the results and then we could also press so i'm just going to show you again so once you press clear this query this most likely all it does is it resets the database right so let's just go back to the function here where we have clear event search clear event search most likely as it sets the search query to empty this search active to false and then it calls this that events all right so it requires the database to get back your basic information so that's it that's our basic our basic event manager kind of something like that it's pretty cool uh what is great about it is because i'm attempting to replace jquery so 
this has been my attempt to kind of use VJS for that and so far it's kind of going going successful. Bootstrap is a very simple easy UI framework and I usually only use certain parts of it with JavaScript so if you could totally replace that that would be pretty cool. So we have some more work to do. We want to actually try different pages and see how it interact with each other. But for now it works pretty fine. Um, so this is the end of the video for now. The code will also be on GitHub. Alright.